the following dramatization depicts the legal procedures practiced by many law enforcement agencies throughout the United States. This videotape will point out the legal steps taken in a legal arrest. They are one, probable cause, two, detainment, three, field sobriety test, four, arrest, five, booking, six, intoximeter, seven, incarceration, and eight, arraignment. No, thanks, Mike. I think I'll just have a Pepsi. I better get along pretty soon. Miss, can we have another beer and a Pepsi, please? How can I get going, Mike? I told Kathy to be home by five. Oh, stay. I'm just going to have one more for the road. Don't you think you've had enough? Are you okay to drive? I'm fine. I'll see you next week. Bye. with the vehicle. It's all over the road. I should check out and see if he's all right. Let's see, right after this stop sign, I'm gonna put on my blue lights. Hopefully, he'll pull over in the Brookdale lot. can't be after me. I'll pull over and let him pass. Three hundred three to Hollis. Stopping a vehicle for erratic operation. It'll be New Hampshire six zero two six six zero. This will be in the parking lot of the Brookdale Fruit Farm.
So you didn't want me, did you? Yes, sir. What did I do, sir? May I see a license and registration, please? Registration? Yes, Mr. Whalen. Also, your driver's license, sir. This is a uh, merchant savings bank uh, identification card. It's not your license. Could you take it out of the folder there for me, sir, and just hand me just the registration, please? Okay. What was I doing, sir? Okay, Mr. Whalen, the reason I have you stop, sir, is I've noticed your operation traveling eastbound on Ash Street. You have your left indicator light on, stating you're gonna make a turn and you continue just easterly on the road and then make any turns. Also, your operation is erratic in that you're driving over the solid yellow line, and then you drive on the soft shoulder dirt portion of the uh, road. Uh, there was something in the car. What was that, sir? It was a bee. Uh-huh, a bee? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Mr. Whalen. Um, this time, sir, I'd like you to step out of the vehicle for me and take a field sobriety test. For what? Well, sir, I want to make sure that you're all set to drive, okay? Notice your operation. Your operation isn't very good at all. Just want to check and make sure you're, you're coordinated enough to drive the vehicle. Okay. Would you step out of the car, sir, and take a field sobriety test for me? Are you ill, sir, or sick or anything? No. Do you have no. any problems with your legs or anything? No. Okay. Would you shut your door and step back to the rear of the uh, your car in the front of my cruiser? I had a couple of beers. Why don't you stand right over here? Okay, Mr. Whalen. This time, sir, I'm going to have you do a series of three tests for me. I'm going to explain each test, demonstrate each test, and you'll perform each test, okay? According to the way I want you to do it, okay? First test I'd like you to do is stand with your heels together normally, how you normally would put your heels together. Okay? Okay, what I want you to do is extend your arms outward, pointing just your index fingers, just pointing your index fingers, okay? Okay, what I want you to do now is I want you to tilt your head back and close your eyes for me. Tilt your head back and close your eyes. Okay. Okay, now look at me for a minute. What I want you to do is on the commands, I'm going to give you a left index fingertip to the top, tip of your nose, right index fingertip to the tip of your nose, okay? Okay, tilt your head back, keep your eyes closed, okay? Take your left index fingertip and place it on the tip of your nose. Okay, bring it back. Place your right index fingertip on the tip of your nose. Bring it back. Okay, Mr. Whalen, why don't you relax, put your arms down, open your eyes. Okay, Mr. Whalen, the next test I want you to do is a walking test for me, okay? Why don't you stand over here and put your back towards the cruiser. Step right over here, yeah? Just walk right over here. Okay, now just turn around and face me. Okay. okay, Mr. Whalen, what I'd like you to do on this test is where your left rear wheel is, okay? When I tell you to, I want you to walk towards it in a normal, everyday fashion. Turn right around and come back and stand right in this position. Maybe come back here. That's right. Come back to the same position. You walk to the left rear of your tire, turn around, and walk back and get in the same position. Do you understand that? You understand it? Yes. Okay, sir. So why don't you go ahead and, go ahead and uh, walk? Right over to me. Okay, Mr. Whalen, the last test I have for you is what is known as a coin test. 
Okay. Coin test. I have the coins. You can just put all your money in your pocket. What I have here is three coins. A dime, a nickel, and a quarter. Now I'm going to place these on the ground. And what I'd like for you to do is to pick up one coin at a time, hand it to me with the head spacing up. Then you go down and pick up the second coin. Bring it up, place it in my hands with the heads facing up. Go down for the third coin. Pick it up, place it in my hand with the heads facing up. Do you understand each of those? Coins in your hand? One coin at a time, hand it to me with the heads facing up. Do you understand that, Mr. Whitney? Okay, anytime you're ready, sir. Any coin you want to pick up first. failed each of the tests, and therefore I'm placing you under arrest for DWI, driving while intoxicated, sir. I only had a few beers. I stopped for okay. a few beers at the village cooker. Why don't you place your hands on the cruise and you're being placed under arrest for DWI? Why aren't right, you not arresting criminals? Okay, so you are a criminal. Take your right hand and place it behind the small of your back. Okay, why don't you turn around right here. Turn around right this way, sir. Lean right up against the cruiser. Okay, Mr. Whalen. right now I'm going to advise you of your rights. I want you to listen very carefully to me. At this time, I'm asking you to take a breath test to determine the amount of alcohol or control drug in your system. If you refuse to take such a test, your right to operate a motor vehicle in this state will be denied for a period of 90 days. If you have been previously convicted of DWI, refuse to take such a breath test, your right to operate a motor vehicle in this state will be denied for a period of one year. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. You have the right to have a separate blood, urine, or breath test taken by a physician or any one of your own choosing for your own analysis and at your own expense. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I will afford you the, the opportunity for your second test. Are you under a doctor's care at this time? No, no, no. Okay. Have you taken any medications recently? No, no. Okay, do you, every do you understand everything I've explained to you so far? Yes. Okay. Okay, also I want you to listen very carefully. I'm gonna read you your Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you do or say can and will be used as evidence against you in a court of law. You have the right to have a lawyer represent you from this moment on. If you cannot afford a lawyer, you may ask the court to appoint one to represent you. You need not answer any questions without a lawyer present. If you decide to answer any questions without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. Do you understand each of these rights as I've explained them to you? Yes. Okay. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to waive your right to talk to us? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay, Mr. Whalen, this time I'm going to place you in the rear of the unit, and I'm going to transport you to Hollis PD for booking. Okay. Are you going to take a breath test, sir? No. You're not gonna, I, 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 let me think about it. Okay. You want to think about it? Yes, I only had a couple of beers. I just want to think about it. I'll okay, I really need test. to know now, Mr. Whalen, because it takes some time to get somebody in there to warm up the machine. All right, I'll take the test. You'll take a breath yes, test? Yes, I have only had a few beers. Okay, why don't you come with me, Mr. Whalen? getting in. Okay, Lenny. 
Why don't I take my weapon so I can process this prisoner for me? Thanks. What's going to happen to me now? Okay, Mr. Whalen, what's going to happen now is I'm going to take some fingerprints from you, and also I'm going to take two pictures of you. For what? For our records, sir, that you've been arrested by us. Mr. Whalen, as you can see, this is a fingerprint card. There's nothing incriminating on it to say you're guilty of DWI or anything. All it's just saying that I'm taking your fingerprints, and I need you to sign right there, sir, right, right, right by the X. Right yes, sir. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to work with your right, right hand first. Like you just your right hand. Like you just take your thumb and put it up in this manner here. Okay. Let me do all the work. Okay, now give me your index finger. Close the rest of your fingers. What are you going to do with these? They just go into our central file, sir, okay? Um, every so often, we send them back to the FBI, and what we do is we just run, have them run just uh, routine checks by running your fingerprints. They can determine whether or not uh, you're wanted by any agency. Um, you want it by some other organiza uh, police organization, federal, state, or local, it will tell just by your fingerprints. Okay, that's your right, that's your right hand. Now we're going to do your left hand, okay? What happens to me now? Okay, Mr. Whelan, what's going to happen now is you're going to be transported down to the National Police Department for the test. What about my truck? Your truck will be towed to Hollis Auto. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon, John. How are you doing? Very good. Mr. Whalen. Is your first name Michael? Yes, sir. Where are you living now, Michael? London, Derry. 80 Hall Road. Your date of birth, sir? 226-49. Hey, Mr. Whalen, I'm asking you to take everything out of your pockets and put it up on the counter. We also need any jewelry that you may have. Rings, watches, necklaces. Do you have any necklaces on, sir? No, sir. A watch? No, sir. We also need your belt and your shoes. What do you want my belt for? Sir, in order to take the belt from somebody who may do harm to themselves, we also have to remove it from everybody. So we need your belt and your shoes. Is there anything else in your pockets, Mr. Whalen? No, sir. We also need you to put your hands against the brown wall in back of you and spread your legs apart. We have to double check to make sure you didn't forget anything in your pockets. I didn't forget anything. We have to double check, sir. Mr. Whalen, right on this brown wall right here. It's right flat against the wall right there. Okay, put it up a little higher. Okay, put your feet back. Okay, Mr. 
Okay, Mr. Whalen, this is a list of items that we have removed from you. There's your dollar, your rings, your keys, your shoes, and your belt. Would you sign right here for your belongings, sir? Right there? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Whalen, would you go with this officer? And he will have a place for you to sit down and wait for the breath test. Okay, right this way, Mr. Whalen. Mr. Whalen, this is the intoximeter right here. In 20 minutes, I'm going to ask you to take a test. We have to wait 20 minutes by state law. While we're waiting for the test, I'd like you to read the New Hampshire implied consent rights. Okay, the arresting officer has already read this to you out on the street. We ask that you read it again so that you understand it. I'm going to have you read the top line out loud for me. That will show that you can read. Then I'd like you to read the rest to yourself. Okay, if you have any questions, just ask me and I'll explain them to you. And when you get done, please tell me. Okay, would you read the top line out loud for me, please? You have been arrested for driving under the influence of intoxicating liquor or drugs. Number four, if I don't take this test, I lose my license for 90 days? That's correct. If you refuse to take the test, you automatically lose your license for 90 days. That's not dependent on what happens in court at all. Okay, you understand those rights, sir? Yes. Okay, would you sign it so that you do understand that? Now, Mr. Whalen, we have to wait the 20 minutes for the test. Okay, during that time, I'd like that you not belt, burp, vomit, or place anything in your mouth. Okay, that would adversely affect the test against you. But I only had a few beers. Okay, Mr. Whalen, it's about time to start the test. I'm going to need some information from you. But I only had a few beers. Okay, Mr. Whalen, I'll answer any questions later. Now I need some information. Mr. Whalen, how do you spell your last name? W-H-A-L-E-N. First name? Michael. Any age of middle initial? None. Your date of birth? 226-49. Your licensing state, where are you licensed from? New Hampshire. Well, like I said, I only drank a few beers. That's all I had. Okay, the rest now is Sergeant Gwynn? Yes. Power speeding? Yes. So, but if I only had a few beers, then there shouldn't be any problem with this. I don't see what I'm doing this test for. It depends on many factors. It depends on how quickly you've had your drinks, whether it was on an hour, it's spaced out. It depends on what you've had to eat earlier this evening. It also depends on your body weight, your tolerances. It depends on many factors. I cannot tell you what your exact reading is. Every person is different. We just have to wait a second. When I'm ready to ask the take the test, I want you to take a deep breath, blow long, continuous, until I ask you to stop. Okay, that will put a proper sample into the machine. If you did not blow as long and continuous as you can, the machine will abort, which means you did not get a full sample. I'll ask you to take the test one more time and blow into it again. If you did not blow into it again properly, the machine will abort again, and at that time it will be considered a refusal. Okay, Mr. Whelan, at this time I'm going to ask you to take the test. What I'd like you to do is sit in this chair for me, please. Okay, when you're ready, you want you to blow into this tube, like I said, long and continuous until I ask you to stop. Okay, that's fine, Mr. Whelan. If you have a seat back in here, I'll tell you the results in a minute. Mr. Whelan, the results of your test are point one two which means you're legally under the influence in the state of New Hampshire. At this time, you're going to be charged with driving while intoxicated. Sergeant Goy is going to place you in a cell, and then later on, you'll be arraigned. Mr. Whalen, would you like to use the telephone? Yeah. OK, would you step in the cell, please? All rise. Judge H. Philip Howarth presiding. Good morning. We all be seated. All right, what we're here for this morning is to read the charge to the defendant 
and to take his plea to the charge that's being read. Before we do that, there are some things that I should explain to you as far as your rights in court and the consequences of whatever plea it is that you wish to make to the charge. There are basically three kinds of pleas that you can make. The first kind is a plea of guilty, which means the court will find you guilty. If you plead no contest, uh, basically the same result will happen, except you will be given an opportunity to state what it is that you feel uh, might mitigate uh, the finding, but you will still be found guilty after we hear from you. And the only question, if you plead guilty or no contest, sometimes called NOLO, is what will the sentence be? And the third kind of plea that you can make is a plea of not guilty. Now, the only way that you can preserve your rights to a trial, your rights to require the state to prove its case, your right to present evidence on your own behalf, be represented by an attorney, you can cross-examine the state's witness, and generally go through all the processes that are entitled to you by the Constitution of the United States and the state of New Hampshire. The only way you can preserve those rights is by entering a plea of not guilty. Because if you plead guilty or no contest, you will be found guilty. In fact, you'll be found guilty here today. And as I said, the only thing then will be at issue is what we are going to fine you and what other penalties are going to be imposed. Now, if you have any question about the contents of the charge, or you have any question about the state's ability to prove its case, you feel you're innocent, you want to require the state to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt, as they are obliged to do to convict you, the way to do that is to enter a not guilty plea, and we will then set the case down for hearing at a later time, about 30 days from today, and you will come back at that time, either by yourself or with the counsel or an attorney, and you will have a full trial, and the state will have to prove its case, and you can offer whatever defenses are available to you and try to uh, prove that the state is wrong. At this point, we will ask the clerk to read the charge, and we will ask you to give a plea. Michael Whalen, please rise. I have a complaint here that alleges that on the sixth day of October 1985 at 5 p.m., you did commit the offense of driving while intoxicated in that you did knowingly drive a motor vehicle uh, to wit, a 1982 Datsun bearing New Hampshire registration 602-660 on a way in Hollis, New Hampshire, known as Air Street, while under the influence of intoxicating liquor. Your plea, please. Not guilty, Your Honor. All right, you've entered a plea of not guilty to the charge, which means you come back on the day that the court clerk is assigned. Will you be getting your own attorney, sir? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So the only question left uh, is a question of bail. Lieutenant, do you have a recommendation on bail? Your Honor, the reason Mr. Whalen wasn't released last night was because of a default which showed up on his motor vehicle record check. We've since determined that that has been taken care of. He lives in Londonderry, New Hampshire, and he's a teacher at the Hollis Junior High School. The state would have no problem with the personal recognizance bail in the amount of $385. All right, uh, Mr. Whalen, we'll ask that you stay for the recess. You will have to make out some bail papers. However, once you make those out, you will be released on your personal recognizance. I may say for the record that if you had been from, from Massachusetts, uh, we would have asked that you post cash bail because we normally ask for that for people who are out of state. And if you were um, involved with a misdemeanor, we would probably ask for higher bail and we would absolutely require it before you left the state. In cases involving felonies, of course, uh, the bail would be still higher and we would probably require considerable security before you were, were released. But for this time, you were uh, to be released on your personal recognizance. The only thing I can say to you is that that's a privilege and not a right. It's on your good behavior. And if you do get involved in any further trouble uh, before the case is heard, the bail may be revoked, and you may be required to await the trial at the Valley Street Jail. That's all. I guess you may take the prisoners, Lieutenant. Through this dramatization, we have attempted to point out the eight steps involved when an individual is suspected of driving while intoxicated. They are one, probable cause, 
Two, detainment. Three, field sobriety test. Four, arrest. Five, booking. Six, intoximeter. Seven, incarceration. And eight, arraignment. Remember, drinking and driving don't mix. Not only do you risk embarrassment and arrest, but you are also putting your life and the lives of others at risk. Don't drink and drive. It's against the law. Thank <laughs> you.